Hey beautiful people and welcome, welcome, welcome to my channel once again. And to my new viewers, thank you for joining me. On my channel I do mukbangs, ASMRs, challenges, uh, mock pressions, lip syncs, um, story times, vlogs, um, and the list goes on. I do whatever puts a smile on my face. Whatever I think that uh, will help someone else out there. And I try to do it in a fun way. Today I just want to talk to you all about, or share with you, I'll not talk to you about it. But I would like to share with you all the importance of your medications. And just dealing with heart, to, heart disease. And <clears throat> the importance of blood pressure medication. Okay, taking your blood pressure medication. I am not a doctor, although I have held many different career heads, many different uh, professional heads, and so forth. I repeat, I am not a doctor. Okay, the, what I know, what I do know is how it's like, what it's like dealing with or living with heart disease. And I don't really like to say that word disease because it just sounds like something is it's wrong that it's just not gonna get better. It's just one of those things mentally for me. However, I have congest for those who do not know um my journey or whatever um, my go back to my very very first video, and I had I tell you uh, my journey as far as when I first uh, learned that I got congestive heart failure and the medications and things that I had to take. But I just want to I felt impelled compelled to say this to you all because um, I hope that it reaches someone today. Okay, and I'm going to try my best to um, not make it long and overdrawn because I really, I'm just really coming from the cuff on here, you know, because I just want to talk to my people, all my people, okay, or all people. But particularly, let me tell you about our people, okay, um... We in the black community, a lot of times for our generation, and I am not the, the sports person for black people. Don't get me wrong. However, I know what it's like to live black, okay? <laughs> so, but I just want to share something with you in hopes that it would help someone out there today. Someone out there and if it does not help you perhaps it will help someone that you love and care about a friend just someone else okay now these are my current meds that i am on i have congestive heart failure and i have a defibrillator okay now um i'm not going to go into the details and this and that, but I just want to tell you the importance of, you know, taking your medications and um, not listening to laymen, meaning people, you, your friends or family or strangers or anyone that does not have a medical degree telling you what is wrong with you, diagnosing you, okay? Oftentimes, we in the black community, our um, parents and grandparents and stuff, if you are a man or woman at a, a certain age, at a mature age, you understand what I'm saying, what I'm saying. Um, they wouldn't go to the doctor unless something was pretty much falling off, okay? And you have a lot of that has been transferred into our families through generations but I'm here to here to tell you it's very very important to 
um, seek medical care. It's like preventive maintenance on a vehicle. You don't wait till you throw a rod in your vehicle to put oil in it. So why wait until the pain is that you're suffering, um, <clears throat> that the pain is so unbearable, and then you're going to go and seek help? We have to do better. We must do better, okay, for generations to come. We have to do better on that. And I'll be the first to tell you that I was um, guilty of not taking my blood pressure medication. I was diagnosed with high blood pressure when I was about 30, I was in my mid-30s, that's about, probably about 36, 35, something like that. And I remember when I came out of the doctor's office, out of the building, and I got in my car and I called my daddy, how whew, I was so upset that I had to take medication. But he knew exactly what to tell me, how to calm me down, and how to look, make me look at it a whole different way. Now, let me tell you this, fam. When I first got congestive heart failure, I was on a, um, what they call a, um, now it's telehealth, you know, but you can actually go to your, your doctor and stuff and uh, they don't have to be there. It, everything is through the computer, okay? And actually, they can even check your lungs and everything. And, you know, as you're uh, there through the computer. Awesome. Now, before, um, I was on the telehealth to where I had, they, they sent me home. They sent a machine home with me to where it connects with the hospital. And what it does is, what, what I had to do was, Every morning, I had to um, take my my uh, blood pressure, my oxygen level, you know, putting that on my finger, the, the device on my finger. I took my oxygen level, and I had to weigh myself. Because of congestive heart failure, you know, if you start to gain weight quickly, you know, um, that would have been a sign of water being retained. And which was, would have not have been good. So I, um, I, I was on the machine, I was on the machine. And um, one day I got a certificate in the mail and it said, you know, um, pretty much you don't, you know, send us, uh, we don't, you don't need the machine anymore. So I said, okay. <laughs> but I was like, oh my God, what, you know, I looked at it as something negative, like, oh, you know, I don't need the machine anymore. And I went to my doc when I went to my primary doctor and I told him about it. He had never heard of it, but he was saying, you know, that's a good thing after that. So we both were like, I well, guess you graduated. But I tell you, you do everything to survive to you know to, to to continue to live you do what it takes to um well i'll say this i did whatever it took whatever the doctors told me i needed to do because i knew that um i could live with congestive heart failure although statistics say that uh people diagnosed with congestive heart failure die within the first five years. Um, but there are also stages to congestive heart failure. My mother had congestive heart failure for over 40 years. But um, back to the medications and stuff. So I was taking a lot of medications and a lot of that medications was, um, some, of, um, some of the medication was included um, Iron pills. 
I was taking three iron pills, 300, about 325 milligrams each a day. So, y'all know my system was, you knew I was hurting. But, um, then, and then I'm going to tell you about layman in a second. Don't listen to layman. Or girlfriend, take this. Boyfriend, take that. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Please, I beg of you. Because you will be in big trouble. Okay? Seek medical advice. And again, I am not a medical doctor. I am just simply sharing my experience so far um, with you about my condition and as it relates with my medication and all of that and my lifestyle, how my lifestyle had to change. Okay, so um, speaking of um, the layman, for example, I was anemic, and I was anemic for quite some time, and my doctor, he was, my primary doctor was saying, you know, let me, uh, do you mind if I send you out in town? And I finally went out in town, you know, because I have white coat syndrome, but I, I went out in town, and um, the lady, the, the doctor, oh, awesome, she told me when I first walked in there, she, it was it was calm, cool, calm, and collect. She says, you know, a lot of people, they think that uh, anemia and stuff, when they have anemia, that, um, or that um, they may have cancer and things like that. And she says, she told me before she did any blood work, she explained everything to me, and she says, it could be so. It could be uh, several reasons why you are anemic, okay? And she she told me those several reasons, and um, one of those reasons she said was you put the protein in your kidneys. Uh, maybe doesn't make enough to put the protein. So um, did did the um, and she said if it's that we have a shot for that, so that if your hemoglobin level uh, reaches anytime it's under 10 you will have to get that shot so come to find out that's exactly what it was so at that time I was going there at the it was the um, um, I can't remember right now, but anyway, I'm going there. She was hematob she was a hematologist and oncologist. So I'm going there and uh, you know, the sometimes the shots will last a few months, a couple of months, or you know, or longer, you know. So I'll go there, they'll do the blood work, they'll show me all my readouts of all everything, not just my hemoglobin level, but if my hemoglobin level hemoglobin level is um below 10, then I go in the back and I get a shot. Well, I just have to tell you, God has grace and mercy. And I have been through a lot, health-wise, but it's like he has broken me down just to build me up. When I got on the um, high blood pressure medication, I would pick, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would not take it every day. So when I went to my, when I was going to get my physicals, it showed. It showed in the blood work. So, um, you need to take, if the doctor says to take your medications, take your medications, take your medications. Please take them. I know that there are, you know, uh, there be there's a lot of natural remedies out there for certain things, and with congestive heart failure, um, I one of the one of the good things about congestive having congestive heart failure is that it can be reversible. When I first went to the emergency room, my injection fraction was less than twenty percent. 
And as of 2018, it was over 30%. To God be the glory, okay? But let me tell you what I experienced when I did not take my blood pressure medication. My, the headaches were unbearable. When you see the swollen fingers, swollen wrists, swollen ankles, swollen nodules, swollen, I mean, especially those swollen ankles and stuff, it's not always congestive heart failure, but what it tells you is you are, you have a lot of sodium in your body. Sodium is not good. So now my change of lifestyle is um, um, heart healthy diet. Heart healthy diet and diabetes diet is the same. The only difference is sugar and salt intake. With heart healthy diet, you avoid salt. Um, I think I believe the requirement is about, they say about 2,000 milligrams a day, which is a teaspoon. Is that a teaspoon or something like that? But anyway, that's per day that they say you should not, you know, you should have, that's enough salt. And with sugar, I mean with diabetes, then you have to worry about the sugar. But there are so many of us walking around with high blood pressure, heart problems, diabetes, and we don't know it. And the reason that they say that high blood pressure, you know, that uh, having that and stroking out heart is the number one killer is because it sneaks up on you like a stealth. You could be standing, you, you can be standing somewhere one day and then talking to somebody and walking to your car and, or before you get to your car and passing out. It's so important. Some of the things I experienced, the most, most thing, most, um, painful was the headaches when I did not take my uh, blood pressure medication. And I'm going to tell you, again, I repeat, I am not a doctor. However, when you smoke, it raises your blood pressure up. Cigarettes raise your blood pressure up. Alcohol, you have the alcohol up in there, you have that sugar up in there and all that. Alcohol, that's not good, you know. If you smoke, if you drink, it's not good for, um, if you have, it, it, it only uh, hurts when it comes to your high blood pressure. High blood pressure is nothing to play around with. You can't eat sauces, you know, heavy sauces and creams and um, things of that nature and drink uh, excessively. Or depending on what type of what what you know what what you're drinking, you know, are you doing shots or are you doing you know fruity whatever you're doing, but uh, you have to be careful of those things, you know. And um, I didn't smoke before I um, was diagnosed with CHF, but I um, so there was no problem to give up smoking. You know, but I did have my cocktails, you know, but I don't have any, I don't drink. I haven't um, drank alcohol since 2012 when I became ill. I haven't drank alcohol since. So it's been a few years. Um, right now I take one, two, three, four, five, seven medications. Um... One of them is not related to the heart. 
when you are on medications, heart warriors and everyone, when you are med when you're on medications, this is some tips from me to you, okay? Know what medications that you are on. Not only know the medications that you are on, be able to pronounce the medications that you are on, you know. So, you know, if you go to the doctor and you have forgot to take your medications and stuff like that and they're not aware of what you take, then you will be able to know what you take. Know what your medications are for, you know. When I was in that hospital bed and they were giving me these um, medications and giving me this um, thing to breathe through and all that and... I was asking, oh, what's that? Oh, so what does that do? You know, so you got something helping to pump the heart correctly. Then you have something helping to, um, uh, and, you know, and it's good to know your medications because I've been hospitalized and one of the things was due to too much medication. When I first got diagnosed I, with CHF, I was taking 80 milligrams of Lasix. It's a diuretic. Lasix a day. I almost went into organ failure. I almost went, had, uh, what you call that, um, top, not top of shot, but um, when you I, I can't even remember it right now but uh, yeah um, and <laughs> that one particular hospital didn't know that was the reason until I had the same episode you know, to where you get you get dehydrated, you um your organs will shut down, and it's some type of uh, shock or something. I can't remember it at the time right now, but anyway, I probably remember when I started to edit. But um, I'm sorry if this is a long video, but I know I wanted to talk to you all about the importance of you know the high high blood pressure as far as you know my journey, but back to briefly about that anemia i had friends i had one particular uh person to say oh i have this um show me this uh drink this herb or whatever and um it's guaranteed to lower your blood pressure you know because it lowered mine i had no to raise your hemoglobin level level it, I did it, and uh, it raised mine, and this and that. Everybody' situation is not the same. If I would have taken her advice, bought bought that um, uh, over the counter stuff, I never would have known that the cause of my anemia was for completely out of the different reasons so you have to be careful of that you know of layman even like I said that's why I keep saying I am NOT a doctor but I know what it's like to have high blood pressure I know what it's like to have high blood pressure to where it um it's stroke action okay but again you cannot you cannot Smoke, drink alcohol, eat butter sauces, fried, you know, a lot of fried foods. If you're going to fry foods, air fry them or fry them in certain type oils like canola oil, vegetable oil, something like that. You And not eat them every day. Everything, you know, things are moderation. It's called moderation. But you cannot... And you know, heavy creams and all that kind of stuff. You cannot um, 
eat those things and then assume that that blood pressure pill is going to work because it's not. It's not. And one last thing that I just want to leave you all with is, you know, um, when I first got CHF and I told one of my girlfriends and before I can uh, really even finish my story, complete my story, her words was, I don't know if I could be on medication the rest of my life. I don't know if I can do that. I went through that phase when I first got congestive heart failure the rest of my life. But what I told her is, if you want to live, you would. And you'd just be surprised what you would do. Come that time. Unfortunately, I lost that very friend. A few years ago. So, and I miss your soul. And that's why I said early in the video when you have a chronic illness. And, you know, it's something that you can live with. You do whatever it takes to extend your life. And I will tell you, God has truly, truly has grace and mercy. Because he has shown it to me. If you are lonely, no. that's why I'm here. That's why I have my channel. I hope I can help somebody else out. And also, in closing this out, stress is not good. Stress will raise your blood pressure so high to where you will pass out too. Stress is not good. I know all my medications. Sometimes I may not pronounce the um, professional terms, but I can tell you the the um, the slang terms or whatever. Okay, like aldactyl. If I take aldactin, aldactin, what laces I can pronounce. And choric, choric is like carbidol or something like that. But I can go to the pharmacist, I can go to the doctor, and I can tell them what I take. I know how much I take of it. And even with, um, one of the things included in my regimen is um, high blood pressure pill, the Cinepril. But I cut mine in half. This right here is a pill cutter. So I cut my um, the Cinepril in half and I also cut my um, there's a pill I take in the uh, evening, Atorvastin. I, t I, I, um, I cut that in half. But I used to be on, I've, I've been taken off of uh, iron pills. I've been taken off of um, 
40 milligrams of Corey, I mean, uh, Lasix, because I, I would used to take um, tw um, tw 40 milligrams, now I take 20 a day. And thank God I've had no problems. Um, I've taken, I take uh, vitamin D. And I take the women's multiple, I take the gummy, <laughs> um, women's vitamins. Those are really good. And um, you have to take, well, I have to take vitamin D, vitamin C. That's important, the doctor says. And um, potassium is good. Um, but what I understand from the doctor, you know, like you get in a cramp in your leg, something like that, people will give you a banana. Like if you run it, you know, a runner. Too much potassium can give you a heart attack. It's just a lot of things that I've learned that I didn't know. But what I wanted to tell you all is it's so important to take your medications. Not only take your medications, you have to know what your medications do for, you know, for your system. Know what your medications do for you, you know. And that way you will know okay, I can't take this medication and be in the sun because high blood pressure medication and the sun don't mix. It's on the label. You know, it doesn't mix. So you have to be careful. You really do. You have to be careful. So um, I take about six pills in the morning as you can see, I've already taken my six today. And then in the evening, I take four. Okay? So, um, like I said, one in the one in the e one of them in the evening has nothing to do with um heart disease. However, um, uh, it's one of my medication routines. And I want to say, uh, I know I said in closing already, but one thing I want to say is, if you know someone with a serious illness, with a chronic illness, I want you to know, check on them. Check on them. It's nothing to say to... to, to it's, it has not, you know, just, it doesn't cost anything to like, you know, just text a person to say, you know, hope you're feeling well or hello or, I don't know, you know, but just, but, but um, check on them because it's so easy for people with illnesses to go into a deep depression and you know that this is the holidays. It's not the holidays are coming, the holidays are approaching. It's the holiday season, which means the depression level is going to be doubled, if not tripled or quadrupled, you know? But I'm speaking for people with chronic illnesses, the importance of family. It's just like um, if a child, if a newborn is not nurtured and stuff, what kind of adult? If they live to adulthood, do you think that they're going to have? What kind of person do you think that they're going to be in society? They have to have that nurturing. And I understand that all families, you know, not close. Some people don't even have large families. Some people, they may not even have, you know, really extended families and stuff, and stuff like that. But for those that do, reach out. And I'm not saying, uh, ooh, because, you know, you ain't talked to uh, Cousin Leroy in, in 10 years and stuff. I'm not saying just, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying I'm relating the importance of family when someone is ill. When somebody is in the hospital, when, you, when you're in the hospital, I'm going to tell you, when I was in the hospital, um, nothing brightened my day up more than to see family.
to, 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 or to, to see a familiar face, period. To see a familiar face, period. You understand? And be, nothing beats, nothing beats a familiar face. Nothing. And I was so pleased. I was so happy. And that helps a person's recovery. That helps a person's recovery. Family, love, togetherness, all of that, it helps. It helps. And um, heart warriors, just know that if you change your lifestyle, you can live more abundantly. Know that you can, if you change your uh, heart warriors, just know that if you change your lifestyle, that you can live more abundantly, you know. And for all of you all out there that has to deal with high blood pressure or any illness, that requires you to take medications for the rest of your life. Ask yourself <laughs> how much is your life worth to you? Is it worth living to take uh, pills the rest of your life? But remember, don't counteract the medicine. Don't counteract the medicine. In other words, don't go and rub your body down in muscle rub and arthritis creams and CBD oils and everything else. And then go for a morning and, and then go for a run immediately after and wonder why you're so sore <laughs> and you have to doubt on yourself when you come back don't do things that defeat the purpose but heart warriors heart warriors and those are my brothers and sisters that um, are dealing with a chronic illness. Know that you are not alone. You are not alone. Fly beautifully got your back. We in this together. And we can show each other. Um, we can help each other by telling our experiences that will help someone else to help someone else to get off that sofa to help someone else to reduce their salt intake to help someone else to live a more healthier lifestyle until then i want to thank you all for watching i want you to know that i appreciate you and i hope you like my shirt <laughs> You see that heart is flawed? Because we're all flawed in some way. And that's okay. But until next time, you all take care of yourself and stay blessed. And thank you so much for watching. Don't make make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, and share, 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 share with those that you know. Any and everybody. Alright? <laughs> and you know I love you for free. <laughs>